Chapter 27 Git and the Network So far, all of our work has been done in our very own repository that only exists on our computer. That's great, I actually use this often myself when I'm just looking to avoid losing changes or keeping track of things. However, the more common use case is that we are collaborating with others, that we are working on something together with friends or colleagues and we want to share our changes with them. Fueled by the rise of Git hosting sites like GitHub and GitLab, this scenario has become so popular that today many people don't fully comprehend the difference between, let's say, Git and GitHub. Not you, of course. You're on chapter 27 and are probably eager to find out how we get Git to talk to the network. The first thing to know is that Git will only ever talk to the network when you tell it to. That's perhaps something to appreciate for a moment in today's world of cloud services, subscriptions, telemetry, and so on. Git will not do any networking unless you ask it to. So how do you ask it? Well, these are the relevant commands. First up is git clone, which you can think of as the networked version of git init. Second is git fetch, which downloads remote data, but makes no local changes. As an alternative, there is git pull, which also downloads, but merges changes locally. And finally, there is git push, which does the opposite and pushes our local changes to the remote server. Let's look at each of these in detail over the next four chapters.